All right, hi again guys, this is Ivan from BrainyBits.com. Uh, today in this tutorial we're going to play around with some LEDs. We're going to be using these um, WS2812 RGB sticks. Uh, they have eight uh, WS2812. Now the uh, 2812 come in, uh, basically what that means, it's a package. So it's a packaging of a 5050 LED with a WS2811 IC in, that's embedded inside the LED itself. And what that does is that we can control a lot of LEDs using only one digital pin to write to all of them. So with one pin, we can control which one we want to light and what color it should be. Uh, now, they come in two different versions. There's the WS2812. That's the original one. And then you have the newer one, which is the WS2812B. Uh, the difference between the two is not large. I think they made some improvement on the traces inside the chip. So the, the B one is as larger traces, so it can handle more current. And uh, what else is the... Oh, yeah, okay. And also, instead of using six pins to connect the LED to the PC board, the B version has only four pins. So that makes sense uh, to get the uh, B version if you're going to solder yourself these little guys. But if uh, you buy something that's already on a PC board, it doesn't really matter uh, because you're not going to be soldering uh, these guys by hand. So that's basically the big difference between the two. So today what we're going to do, we're going to connect, the way this is connected, they're connected in, se in series. So we're going from this one in and the out of this one goes to the end of this one. And the same thing goes, so they're, they're connected in cascade. So what we're, the way we're gonna show this off is we're gonna use a potentiometer. This is a regular 10K pot. And we're gonna read the value of this and we're gonna map those values to the number of LEDs we have. So as we turn, these, light, these LEDs are gonna light up. And when it gets to a certain number of LEDs, it's gonna change the colors. So we're going to go from green, and when it gets to a certain point, it's going to be yellow, and then at the end, it's going to be red. And when we get to the very end of the pot, we're going to do uh, a little animation of a character, so using it as a matrix, and we're going to read those values from an array, a little bit like we did in the tutorial with the uh, Space Invaders, when we used the uh, Max 7219 uh, matrix. So I'll show you that, uh, how to do that uh, today. So the connections, like I always say, go to our website, brainybiz.com slash tutorials. You'll find a tutorial for this. You get the schematics, you get more information, and you can download the code. And also, I forgot, today we're going to use a very popular fast LED library that was written to actually control these uh, types of LEDs. And it's uh, one of the better ones and uh, very popular. So we're going to use that library also. So we're going to cut here. We're going to go to the code. Talk a little bit about that, see how that works. Then we're going to upload the code, come back, and uh, do our testing right here. So let's go take a look at that, and we'll be right back. All right, so here we are in the code. We're going to start at the top. Uh, at the top, we're including the library which we will be using. It's the Fast LED library. If you go on our website, you'll find the link to download that library uh, from their website. And we're going here to put in the variable numLEDs32, which is the number of LEDs we're using, since we're using four sticks of eight. And the data pin is connected to, it's connected to number two. And this is a command for the fast LED to tell them um, how many LEDs we're using. So we're using the variable that we defined at the top here. Uh, then we do two arrays to display kind of like a simulate a four by eight matrix. So we're gonna display a little character and so it's going to be two frames. And these values here are hexadecimal color values. So like this one, for example, is black. So basically the, the LED will be off. And I believe this one is green. So that's how we're defining which color uh, to um, display on each one of these LEDs. So when it's black, basically we say turn it off. And these are color. So we have 32 values here. So this is frame one, this is frame two. So we'll be using that in our code when we turn the pot full on it will display the matrix and when it goes uh, a little bit before that then we're gonna light each LED one by one and change the colors you'll see that when we do this that's the testing 
And then we have the setup of the library here. We're using the variables that we designed, uh, defined, like data pin and num LEDs. And then we do the, we do the main loop. So here we have, we're putting into the val, into val the analog read, read value of the potentiometer, which is connected to analog pin one. And we're putting that value in here. And here's a, the first if statement. If the value of the pot is smaller than a thousand, because pot, uh, potentiometers go from zero to 1023. So if we're smaller, meaning we're not turning the pot all the way, then we're going to do this part here, like this. So we're just starting to turn the pot. So here we're defining the values. So we're mapping the value of the pot to these values here. So from zero to 950, you're going to map that to be zero to num leds, which is 32 in our case. So zero will be zero, 950 will be 32, and all the values in between will be calculated automatically by this, this little um, function here. So that's the way you map uh, the value of a pot to different numbers that you want. So then we fast let clear, that's a command to clear the display, make all the LEDs go blank. And here is the loop to actually decide which uh, color we're gonna light each one of these in sequence. And basically all it does here, if the number of LEDs lit already is smaller than 12, then make them green. If it's bigger than 12, and but smaller than 24, then it's orange. And when we get near the end of the pot, then we put it red. And we'll see that also. And then we do a fast LED set brightness to 50. It goes from 0 to 100. These LEDs are very bright, so at 50 it's okay if I want to capture it on camera. So if you experiment with these, uh, you'll see that 100 is very bright indeed. And then we do the fast LED uh, show just to uh, get the LED um, uh, lit. And e here, basically, if the value of the pot is bigger than be bigger than a thousand or equal to, then we display the little array that we designed at the top. So this is basically what it does. It takes the value of the array one by one and puts it in the array, the fast LED array, LEDs, and then it shows that frame. And we put a delay of half a second before showing the other frame. So you can just look at this code here, and that's all it does. It takes the value 1, 2, 3, 4, un until it gets 32, reads all the color values, puts it in the array for fast LED to display it. So that's how we display a little animation. You could have more of these if you wanted to. So that's it. So we're going to compile that and then upload it to the Uno. And let's go back to the testing area and see, it, uh, see the results. So let's go take a look. All right, so we're back. We uploaded the code to the Uno. Uh, one thing I want to make a note of, um, when you're using LEDs, LEDs tend to, well, they tend, they, they could take a lot of current. Like each one of these full on, meaning the RGB on, so it's white, um, will take about 24 milliamps. So if you multiply that by the number of LEDs we have here, 32, you would, it would be too much to drive directly from the Uno. Uh, we're using uh, colors right now like green, red, and uh, that doesn't take a lot of current. So when they're all on, I tested it with a multimeter and I get about 80 milliamps. So that's not a problem to drive uh, with uh, the Uno directly. But if you want to make sure, go to our website. We have instructions there um, to put a capacitor and a little resistor uh, to protect the Uno from damage and also protect the LEDs from damage. So if you're driving more or you're driving all white, then you will overcome the uh, maximum rating of the Uno. So you should use um, a little power supply like this to actually drive it, drive the LEDs power. So just take note of that. So we're gonna plug it in and we're gonna see what happens. So here we go. So there we go. All right, so nothing is lit right now. I'm gonna shut down this light so you can see it better. And I'm also going to put a little piece of paper here for the camera to, uh, so you can see the uh, results a little bit better. So here we go. I'm going to start turning the pot. And there we go. We're lighting up. I keep turning. Now it's, it's gone to yellow. Keep turning again. Oh, we're getting red. And there we go. 
So now if I turn all the way, then we're going to go into the loop of the animation. And there's our little character being animated. So let's bring it back down. Threshold is there, so we're going back down. And there you go. It's very fast. As you can see, as I turn, they light up and they close. That's the fast LED library. Really great to control these guys. And it works very well. And it's very easy to uh, do the code also. So there you go, guys. So I hope uh, this helps you uh, start uh, learning about these little guys and making your own projects. Uh, LEDs are always fun to play with. You can do a lot of stuff with them. And using the uh, WS2812 package um, is a great way to connect a lot of them and control them easily using a microcontroller like the Uno or any, uh, any other you might have. So thanks again uh, for watching, guys. Um, like I say, if you like these videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also visit our website, BrainyBits.com, where you can get all these parts and uh, build your own uh, little project like we did here and uh, start experimenting. So once again, I want to thank you guys for watching. My name is Ivan, and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.